as you might guess, I do have a couple suggestions on how this knife could be improved. I think if they're integrated into future versions, the knife will be catapulted into the stratosphere of coolness and utility. No joke. But even as it stands right now, late 2012, I'm pretty much in love with the Kershaw 1870 Knockout. This is a nut and fancy tabletop review on this very cool knife. Jumping right into POU. One thing it perhaps isn't, at least for me, is a tactical blade. This might surprise some, but if you've been watching my videos over the last, I don't know, four and a half plus years, you'll know why. It lacks traction. That's a very important element for a defensive blade, and if you don't have it, I recommend carrying something else, and there's all kinds of other variations uh, on blades and knives that you can put into that philosophy of use, and it will serve well. The 1870, sadly, is not a tactical blade for me. It is, however, an awesome, I repeat, awesome fondling blade. One of my favorite Kershaws ever. That's right, I said it. One of my favorite Kershaw, Kershaws ever, the 1870. It is just a great knife to carry and to play with. And actually, speaking of carrying it, I have really enjoyed doing that. You can see the wear on it. I've been carrying it for over the last month, month and a half, something like that. And... It's one of those knives, when I start carrying it, I don't want to quit carrying it. But I have to put other knives into rotation for testing and review. And sadly, out comes the knockout from the pocket. So I'm talking actually about two POUs right now, but back to the original, and that is fondling blade. To me, a fondling blade is just fun. It's cool. It brings a level of enjoyment when you're watching TV watching a nut and fancy video on the computer and it just brings a smile to your face. That is this knife, totally, the 1870 knockout. And the other philosophy of use that I was referring to is of course utility tasks or everyday carry. Uh, I found it to be a great blade for that, albeit somewhat a big broad blade for me as I've always said, but it works and it's light enough it fits in that role quite nicely. Uh, not tactical, great EDC knife for you if you can go with a bigger blade. Awesome fondling knife. And then I would say collectible. I know a lot of TMPers around the world have started a high value knife collection because they watched my videos here years ago and I recommended you do so. You can actually get an awesome knife collection and each knife is, I don't know, 50 bucks less. This one's going to be more. We'll talk about that. This would be a great addition to that collection. And it could be maybe one of your higher end knives. So you have some bare bones Kershaws and maybe your knockout is going to be maybe one of your premier blades. And I don't know the star of your collection. So a collectible knife as well. Uh, and then lastly, I'll say a food preparation knife. And this will lead us also into, I'll start, I guess I'll start off with a steel and blade shape, which is pretty much outstanding. Look at that belly on the 1870 and it's flat ground from this portion down which I just love always have what a great food prep knife it is and I've used it for that in my carry my own carry cutting tomatoes I think cucumbers carrots I forgot what else I've got going on over the last six weeks great food prep knife absolutely love it the steel is 14 C 28 in fine grained adequately rust resistant Featured in a lot of Kershaw blades, and it performs well. Blows away the old 13C26, Sandvik. Look at that stonewash finish on there. I just love a good stonewash finish, don't you? Look at that. Excellent. Oh, and by the way, this knife is made in the freaking USA. Proving that, yes, knife makers can do it. Charge an, a reasonable price for it. I think this knife is reasonably priced. It supports a U.S. labor force that somehow knows how to get it done. Here's 1870 Kershaw proving that fact, by the way. Looking at the tip, kind of on the strong side. The only thing I would say about the blade that is of a concern for me is there's really no flats for my Edge Pro Apex. So I'm going to have to do some angle adjustment. 
and I don't see an easy way to take the thumb stud off, which is probably a good thing so it's not loosening and rattling. But if, it, if I had, I'd have this flat portion here. For you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, the Edge Pro Apex is a consistent angle grinder. Go watch my review on it. Love it. Still use it. Blows everything else away that I've ever tried or heard about. That would be maybe a downside. There's no flats here. There's an unsharpened swedge coming here that gives the knife a little bit lighter weight, and it's just good looking. It is a broad blade, though. Getting back to EDC tasks, I don't think I have anything smaller in my pocket to reference. I'll show you some competitive options, though, that might be, I don't know, a little bit more suited to finer detail work. Usually, it's going to be along the lines of a Sog Flash 1. Delica 4, for me, this is a broad blade. The weight is outstanding for what it is. On my scale, 3.8 ounces. So that's under 4 ounces. Well done, Kershaw. Outstanding. No steel liners. We'll see that here in a second. And it's a, not a tiny blade, three and a quarter inches. The feel, balance wise, is again, pretty much perfection. I'm just talking the feel and the balance in hand, how it feels in hand. And that'll take us to the speed. This is kind of getting back actually to the, the fondling philosophy of use. I love assisted opening knives. I just love them. Who needs an auto when you have an assisted opener come out like this? Just wicked fast. And you can credit actually the flipper design right here and if you want thumb deployment and look how accessible the thumb studs are on there on the 1870 knockout either way that was a screwed up deployment Let's try it again there we go I use the flipper design usually on this knife and it's it's actually perfection for speed it really is I don't see any way it could be improved upon uh, speaking of lockout Lock out. How about lock up? Pretty tight. I see no movement at all. You can see the stop pin in there. Here's your engagement surface of the locking bar, about 40% by my estimation. There's some room for wear. And that is a subframe lock, and that's another feature I love about the knockout. One is that it's cool. It's technical looking, and two, it seems to be very strong. Hardened stainless locking bar mated into the aluminum, 6000 series aluminum frame. You see this portion here has some steel inset into it as well. A little bit dusty from carrying. Great lockup, great strength, and it's fast. That takes us to handle construction, and here comes the first nothing fancy improvement that I would suggest. Um, the handle first off, let me cover the really good stuff about it, is look how thin it is. Here comes a blur. This is one of the competitive op, op, uh, can't speak offerings I was talking about. A blur by comparison, just because it's here. This is an SG2 2007 version. And the blur, I think, is very carryable, but it's even thicker than the 1870. The thinness makes it such a dream to carry along with this. So that is well done. And there's no unnecessary steel inset into the knockout. That's all good. You have a Zytel backspacer here. I believe that's Zytel. Mini Torx puts it together. Adjustment on the pivot point. All the stuff you'd expect. Really nice milling as far as we're talking about aesthetically on the handle. You can see some wear on there. And this wear I get actually from stuff that's in my pocket. It might be keys, it might be the Cadet Victorinox. So it's, I don't know, it just makes it look Boba Fett cool. I like that. But you can see the anodization will rub off. So thin, feels good in hand. And by the way, rounded corners, you don't see any really sharp corners on it. So they did a good job of milling the hot spots off the blade. The downside is, and this might have been a dead giveaway, is that it's freaking slick the knife is. Uh, that's why I would say probably not, not probably, it's not a good tactical option. You have no traction on the side and honestly you have none up top either and yes it's completely lacking a thumb ramp and any type of gimping. So that's another suggestion is that I would jump the freak out of this right here. I would just start right here on the handle. Bup, 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 bup. Up, up, up. Now, what, when they do that, though, what you get is guys complaining. is like, well, I don't like the striations here, you know, because it's a flipper design, and then I'm abrading here. And you'll see on a competitive offering here in a little 
a little bit. Uh, a knife that does just that, but I like it. I, I think the advantage you get in traction for more serious uses is, is worth it. You do have an option for thumb stud deployment if you want, but the handle's slick. No jimping. That sucks. You do have a choil under here that will act as a finger guard, so that's good. It is what it is. Let's look at the centering. This is such an awesome blade. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Retention. That assist opening. Assisted opening helps with that. It's perfect as well. Ergonomics, I would say, other than the hits that I've mentioned, I love them. This, by the way, helps immensely for extracting it from the pocket. So I'm a right-handed user. I'm carrying tip up, which is always my preference. And so I found in carrying it, I just was not able to get traction on it. It does have a lanyard hole here that you can affix something to. I didn't want to do that with this particular blade. It's too small. So I just put some skateboard tape on it, and man, it's doing great. Now I can get that knife out very quick. It takes us to clip design. How about this? Nearly perfect on the clip design. Number one, it's loop over, so it's deep carry. It's very unobtrusive, and that might add another philosophy of use, which I call a gentleman's knife. So if you have a suit that you're carrying in your workplace and you want to carry a bigger blade, not just something tiny, you might consider the Kershaw 1870 because this sucker buries. You can hardly see anything, and then the black clip blends in with your your pants, whatever kind you're wearing, it's just really awesome. It's strong, attached well, it had no bending issues, and it's reversible and swappable. So you can carry tip down, left, right. This is a great lefty's knife. Great righty's knife, too. The clip, I wouldn't do anything to. It's just perfect. It's not too flared out. It's deep enough to accommodate thicker pants and durability. I would say flawless from what I've seen. Just flawless. I mean, I've been using it, cutting with it. The edge is still wearing good. And by the way, the relief edge out of box, excellent. Mine's getting a little bit dull. Probably needs to be touched up now because it has seen some use. The only thing I would see, I would say is you're going to see more of this, just beaten up. But that's pretty much, that can be pretty much expected with any anodized knife, right? You see the phosphor bronze bushing there. Let's look at a few competitive offerings, why don't we? You already saw this one. And man, I still love the blur. The blur is such a great knife. It really is. And there's so many variations. It's almost like a test bed for Kershaw and steels, different handles. This is a Kershaw Blur 1670. Come out in uh, 2007. You see the mark right there. This is my personal collection. Love it. And it features the SG2 steel. I've never hard used this blade. To me, it's collectible. I love that coloration, by the way. But I roll this in because. Um, this is a good option, and it comes in a lot of different steel types. I'm talking any Kershaw blur, and it weighs right at four ounces, so it's near the same weight as this. And this one actually was more expensive at the time, I think around 100 bucks. Other variations, like the 154 CM versions, actually this might have been more than 100, I forget, but the 154 CM versions are running around that as well. Good option though, and it gives you a size comparison too. See. The recurve portion on the, the blur, I was like, eh, do I really love that? No. I said that in my 2008 review that it makes it harder to sharpen. I'll stick with that. On the Edge Pro Apex, what I'll do is just use that really thin, half-inch wide stone, and it'll follow that curvature just nicely. So that's the blur. Good option. How about our old friend, the Tenacious? Four ounces, 8CR, 13MOV, Chinese produced. 37 bucks. Great knife. That's how you do jimping. I've said that forever. Great thumb ramp. This is a limited edition green G10 version, of course. Has kind of the same broad blade thing going on as the Knockout does. In fact, they're very similar in their function. This is a flat ground blade as well. That's the Spider Coat Tenacious. And then, oh, I just love this knife. Cold Steel Medium New Style Voyager. Let's see what's that sucker weigh. 3.8 ounces is exactly the same weight, and it's about 35 bucks. this knife. Not USA produced. Um, I love the finish on it. It resists rusting very well. It's a great steel, flat ground, tough, good pocket clip, a little bit rough under the 
the clip. I talked about that. And then it has that freaking triad lock, which is amazingly strong. Tested that pretty hard. Great thumb studs. I love the Voyager. Great competitive option. Not USA produced, though. And then I was going to reference this one. This is a CRKT Igniter T. I've reviewed this one. 3.8 ounces. 8 CR. 14 MOV around... A surprising $70. I think it's like $65 to $70. This stays in the Nut and Fancy Project as a cast member, which is functioning as right now. It's got the flats for resharpening. I like that. Beautiful black gray finish on it. Outburst mechanism. I think that's what CRKT calls it. I always get them all their proprietary names confused. It's a liner lock, and it unfortunately forces you to carry tip down. It's not swappable. G10 on the back. Same exact weight, and you can see the different blade profiles. And, and really, that probably is a better utility blade shape for getting into packages, doing stuff like that. The last one I'll show you is also another CRKT, and it has the milling that I was talking about right here by the flipper, but it gives you some really meaningful traction, and that is a CRKT Shenanigans 6061, 4 ounces, OS 8. I love this knife. Reviewed. Comes in a Zytel version as well serrated as well great knife uh, unfortunately has kind of a wizard of oz clip forcing you for tip down carry and it's not swappable so it has some suggestions for improvement as well good flats for resharpening it's a decent steel os 8 zytel backspacer i really like the gray natural gray bead blasted aluminum sick looks like titanium but let's compare it directly against the 1870 knockout a fun review. There you go. Same weights. They're both excellent knives. Uh, nothing fancy. Which one would you prefer to carry? Well, let's put them all on the table. This is going to be a tough question, by the way. Which one would you prefer to carry day to day in an EDC roll? Uh, let's see. Man, that's a tough question. It really is because they're all excellent knives. I could be very happy, but if you guys watch my reviews and the igniters over here, um, I really like thinness because it's not bumping into stuff, <laughs> scratching stuff. And so I would probably say day to day, that Voyager, how much does that sucker weigh? 3.8 ounces. I can't be right. I didn't write that down right. That doesn't seem like 3.8. If it's wrong, I'm going to annotate it right now. That does not seem like 3. This seems like lighter. I would say these two right here. And then pretty much all these other knives would jump in very closely with one another. Uh, this has a tactical philosophy views, has better traction on the top, and actually the blurry can make the case as well, especially when you skateboard tape it like I did this one. Great traction, that could be a tactical blade. I really don't see, a, well, I guess you could skateboard your 1870, could be done. Like I said, I really enjoyed carrying this one around. It's so flat. So flat. All these knives are pretty much chunkier than the 1870 knockout. Um, but there's my answer. I'd say probably these two, day to day. If I had to throw a uh, tactical end, then the tenacious comes in a little bit. The resilience, actually, the big brother to that. Wicked blade. Go buy one. Uh, the value on this, I think, is going to be around $65. A little bit more, a little bit less. Look in the upper right. That's my recommended retailers to go get. The Kershaw 1870 knockout. My suggestions for improvement are jimping, meaningful jimping up here. I know they won't do it. I wish they would, at least on the blade, and maybe make a flare on the blade. It would change the lines on it. And then here's another one. Remember, you heard it here first. Colors purple, bright blue, lime green, fire engine red, 1870 knockouts. Yeah, catapulted to the stratosphere of awesomeness. This has been the Nut and Fancy Review. See ya.